Okay, so today I'm going to laser engrave a powder coated bar key. It's a bottle opener, they're typically called bar keys, they got a lot of different names, but anyway, it's it's a uh, powder coated and we're gonna laser engrave it with my Atom Stack S10 Pro. So the first thing I need to do, I need to find out my layout area for my design. This thing's gonna have a, the bar name on one side and then the other side is gonna have the bartender's name. So I got seven or eight of them to make, but I'm just gonna make one of them for the video. So the first thing we need to do, need to measure the top and it's 1.57 inches, 1.575 inches. So let's remember that 1.575 inches. And then we're going to go between where this little end end of this circle is to the edge of this circle for our width. And it is going to be, let's just call it four and a quarter. 4.25 inches, so four and a quarter on their width. So let's go into light burn and we will lay this out. I've already actually got it laid out, but I'm gonna go over everything and show you exactly how I did it, where you'd be able to replicate it yourself if you want to. So let's move into light burn and we'll move on from there. Okay, so here we are in light burn and I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this all over out of the way. And then I'll just redraw this whole thing. So we're going to make a rectangle and just make it however you want to. Oh. So make a rectangle and then you come up here on your width and height, unlock it. We're going to make it four and a quarter wide. Oops, I don't know what that hit. So 4.25 wide and 1.575 on our height. So there's our triangle. And oops, I didn't want to make another one. I did undo. So we got our triangle here. I think I accidentally made two of them. So we got our triangle. And this is the way I always like to lay things out. I always try and move everything to the center. So you go through these little crosshairs and move to page center. So that centers, this right here is the exact center of my page. And it just helps with layout. So, okay, we want to get out of that now. So we want to come back and we're going to recreate our text. So you just click the text button. And I think my presets are still the same. So we're going to type out P-A-Y-T-O-N. And then highlight that again. Just go back to your selection arrow. And then we come back up here again and move to center. Highlight, make sure it's highlighted. Move to page center and it perfectly centers it in your layout. So this box we have here is our layout box uh, for the our layout area on our bar key. And then this is centered in the middle of that. So this should come out fine. And the only reason we made the box is just for layout purposes. We're not going to print the box. So what we're going to do here, we'll highlight this and we'll assign it a color. Let's assign it to 03, that little color right there. So that's that little green color. And what we want to do here is where it says output. We want to turn that off. That way it will not, when it goes to print this, let's turn it back on first. I think we can we can go ahead and just delete that. Before we do that, I'm going to save my settings for the the text I had here. I had it 3540. So let's go ahead and assign this another color. Let's just make it, uh, we'll make it maroon. So we're number 10. So let's, and it did that, well, it almost did it automatically. So let's change this to 3,540. So 3,500 at 40%. And bi-directional is fine. We don't need crosshatch on it. All these are just the standard settings that it comes with. So now we have our text set there. So now we can come in. We don't even need this anymore. We can just delete this off. So that's how easy it is to recreate this. It's not hard at all. So what we want to do, if we go up here and do the uh, preview, and look, it's going to print this whole thing. I don't know why it's doing that all the way across. There's no reason for it to do that unless there's something else on here. I have no idea why it's running all the way up and down like that. I've had this happen before, and I'm going to show you an easy way to fix this. I don't know. For some reason or another, it's going all the way across the page. 
And there may be something else on there that's not visible to see, but it shouldn't be doing that. Oh, here it is. That's because this this uh, fill layer, this line up here is set at some crazy dimensions. So let's just set that. Uh, let's just set it to three thousand, and it's set on a fill. But we don't need that to be a fill anyway. So let's highlight that. We'll change that. Would be a line normally if you were cutting it. So let's just change that to a line. And we'll just set it to some kind of normal cut, like maybe a 300 at 60% or something. And I'm just showing you this for, for a reason. So we have a line. The green one is going to be a line. The maroon color is going to be a fill up here. So when we do a preview, that's what it's going to do. It's going to cut out the line. And then it's going to fill the name that we have on here. Okay. So... Our green line was just for layout purposes. We don't want to use it. So if you come up here where it says output, turn that off. The green line is still there for layout purposes, but it will not print it. And when you go to, to your preview again now, it does not do the line on the outside. So it's just for layout purposes, and all you got to do is turn it off. And I keep it there because when I do the multiple uh, bar keys, I'll just change the name, and I can still use this box to center in my layout area and make sure that it looks right, that it fits okay. Because so like if some of the names are real long, I may have to to reduce the size of the name to make it fit from side to side. So we leave that on there for layout purposes, but we're just not printing it. So, so now we've got this laid out ready to print, but I don't know for sure my settings, okay? Because all these things, these powder coats are different. I've done a lot of cups. I've done some of these bar keys before, but the paints are different. So I got a new batch of these things that I ordered, and it, a lot of it could just depend on how thick the paint is on how well it's going to cut. So what we're going to do first, we're going to go ahead and highlight this thing, and then we're going to duplicate it. So you go up here, edit, and duplicate. And I think you can also right-click and duplicate. Yeah, you can. So now there's a, let's just do it again. Well, let's undo that. I want to show you something. So edit, undo, duplicate. So we got this highlighted. We're going to right click. We're going to duplicate. You can't see it, but it's there. But if you take your arrows, it's just going to move it down. Okay, so now we got two copies of this. Uh, I want to take a text. And instead of printing this whole thing, I just put my text, click my text button again, and I'm just going to make a P. And I'm going to highlight my P, and I'm going to move it all the way over. And we'll go ahead and delete this again. So now, all I'm really going to be printing out is just this P. And the reason I do that is because I want to test my settings to make sure that my settings are right. So I've got a spare one of these things that I'm going to test this on. Make sure it comes out right because I don't want to print the whole thing out, take all the time it takes to print it, and use up all my space on there and have it not be right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over to the laser and we're going to set this up and we're going to run just this P. Let's go ahead and do a we'll do a file and a save as, and we'll go name and test. So this is our test one. And that way we didn't lose our original that we opened up the first time. That one's still there. So we got 3,500 at 40. This doesn't matter. The line doesn't matter because we have the output turned on. So all it's going to print is this P on here. So let's move to our laser and we'll get this set up and we'll print this out and see how it looks. So before we put this on the laser, we need to get our starting point for our laser. So obviously this the bottom here is going to be our bottom side. That's going to be our starting point. But we're going to start on the left bottom so to do that, we got to find a mark to line this thing up with. So what I'm doing, I'm just putting this little square right on the edge of the circle. So I'm just going to bring that line down. It moved on me a little bit. So I just make a little pencil mark. And it's not very bright, but you can see it. It's right there. So right there, right there is going to be my starting point before we stick it on the laser. Okay. So we're going to take our bar key and we're going to lay it in here and we're just going to get this thing somewhere close and this this is just how I lay this thing out. I don't know if it's the right way or not. It's how I do it. If 
fire my laser. Boss. That looks pretty good right there, especially for this test burn. So then I just set my card in here, carefully drop this down, snug it down, slide my card out without moving my bar key. So now I'm centered on that and I got my laser focused in. So I come back over here and I hit my set origin. So that sets my origin to where the laser is now. I can go ahead and turn my fire off or my test fire off on my laser. And so go back to cuts and layers. So this should just print this piece at 3500 speed and 40%. So we go ahead and hit start. We'll turn my air assist on just to keep it from burning and hit start. And that was a 30, 38 seconds I think it took to print that. So that's what it looks like. So now I'm going to go get my uh, some water and my magic eraser which is my technique for cleaning this thing and we'll take it, we'll clean it and we'll see what it looks like. Okay so basically I just got a bowl of water here and then there's my thing. So uh, these magic erasers, magic erasers and Dawn dish soap. Any kind of dish soap would probably work fine. So basically I just get my eraser a little bit wet. I put a drop of Dawn on there and you just take it and just rub it like this. And it works so good. I use it on all my cups and everything. And you just give it a nice little scrub And you rinse it off and then wipe it with a towel. So I don't know how well you can see that. That is a little weak. So we need to do another test and we're going to go, let's get back on light burn and we'll adjust and we'll make the next letter just a little bit darker. Okay. So what we're going to do, I'm going to duplicate this thing. And we'll duplicate it one more time. And then we're going to give each of these a different layer. So we'll make that a green one. And we'll make this one uh, something different. It's kind of peach color. Okay, so now we got these three. So what we're going to do, we'll come back over here to our cuts and layers. And we're going to make this green one. Oh, those are similar. Which one was that? So if you touch the highlight this one, it's this number 11. So we're going to make that a fill. And then, so these here, these two here are a new piece. This is our middle P. So we're going to change 3,500. At 40 was a little bit weak. So we can go 3,500. There's two things you can do. You can go from 3,500, leave it at their speed the same, and increase your power. Or, we'll go back to 40 on this one. But we'll take our speed and go down to 3,000. So both of these, so what we did, this is our original 3,500 at 40. This one we left the speed the same, up the power. This one left the power the same and lowered the speed. So either one should make a, a deeper cut or do a better job at taking off the, uh, the letters off of there. So what we want to do is we want to take this one and we don't want to print that one again because we already know what it did. Matter of fact, let's do this. Since we're just doing testing, let's go ahead and turn this one back on. We will take this one and we'll do something Maybe in the middle. Let's go uh, 3250. So we'll go in between on the speeds. And we'll go in between. We'll lower the speed a little bit. And then we'll go in the middle at 45. So from what our original one was now, we lowered this one. Uh, lower the speed a little bit, increase the power a little bit. This one we left the power the same, increase the power. 
uh, or, or left the speed the same, increased the power, slowed the speed down, left the power the same. So we'll just scoot over a little bit. So let me get reset up and then we'll run this and then see what it looks like. So let's hit start. And that will print these three letters out and then uh, we'll see how they look. So we got, this will be four different settings and we'll see which one works the best. Then hopefully one of them will be good enough and we can run with it. Okay, so apparently I had some of my settings wrong because it looked like it did a cross hatch on that one and then it did a line cut on that one. So I didn't change my, if you go back and look on my program, uh, I had a line on that last one, which is not good. And then for some reason or another, I had a cross hatch on that middle one. And the cross hatch one actually looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and pull that off. And uh, we'll, i tell you what, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn this one off, this one off, and I'm just going to pick a random spot here. It doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get it printed. We'll just go right here and we'll go ahead and run this last one. I'll make sure it's not cross hatched or anything. It's a 3040, so the cross hatch isn't on. We just need to change that to. Okay, so this P right here is the one that was done at 3000 speed and at uh, 40%. So let's clean that one up. And you can scrub really hard and clean all this stuff out good. It's not gonna scratch it. That's a good thing about the Magic Racer. It does not mess up your paint. It just cleans up the residue off of the, the letter itself or, you know, with a cutout. Takes it back down to the stainless steel. And if you do it enough, it actually will polish the steel up a little bit too, make it look really good. So that looks pretty good. I don't see any residue left from the paint. And honestly, that looks about as good as what this crosshatch one over here did too. So I think we're going to go with that 3040. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up and I'm going to get a fresh one of these keys and we'll actually print the logo onto the other side. Okay, so I've got my uh, whiskey hatchet logo in here now. Everything's set up the same, so we're going to change. I've got the, uh, the blue, it's turned off, so we're not going to print that. That's just my alignment. And then the, or sorry, the the number seven, whatever that color is. And then the, the light blue color, which is six, that's my text. So we got that set for fill. And we're going to change that to 3000. And 40. And we don't have cross hatch on. Everything else stays the same. I did okay. I've already got it lined up. So we're going to set our origin and we're going to hit start and I'm going to time lapse this. Okay, I went ahead and took this in and cleaned it up in the sink. It's a lot easier to do in there than it is in a bowl. Uh, it came out looking pretty good. The only thing I don't like about this one, and I think it's just the keys that I got, I don't know if it's really truly stainless steel underneath there because it doesn't have that shine that the stainless steel would have, but I don't think it's going to get it. It's just the way the metal looks underneath, but it still looks really cool. So anyway, that's just kind of my process on you got to figure out your settings on what works. So. Hopefully you have a spare of whatever you're going to cut on or some scrap and do some testing on it and figure out what works good and what doesn't work. And then once you figure out what works good, then you go to your real material. 
So anyway, I really do appreciate you watching. Uh, if you would like to see, I can make a video on how I made this logo because I did it basically used a JPEG off their website and then took it and converted it uh, into a ping. And then I took it and put it into a light burn and traced it. Then I made some adjustments on it to make it look right. If anyone's interested in seeing stuff like that, leave comments in the bottom that you'd like to see that. And I could do a separate video on just how I went about making this logo, which you could use for just about anything. But the trace features in Lightburn are really incredible. So you can do a lot of different stuff with it. Anyway, I appreciate you watching. Please like, please subscribe, please share my videos. Thank you. Bye.